What's up, everyone? We're going to do an Instagram live right now with Jamil Zaki, who was uh, just on Bulletproof Radio. In fact, the episode should be going live about now. But he is known as the War for Kindness author, which is, oh, there we go. He's coming on right now. You come on, Instagram. You can do it. Go back with him. All right. We're waiting for him. There we go. Welcome, Jamil. Hey there, Dave. Good to see you. Good to see you. So, Jamil, I was just telling people, we um, just recorded a podcast uh, that's coming out uh, about now on Bulletproof Radio. And you are uh, the uh, professor of psychology at Stanford, and you talk all about kindness here at Stanford's Neuroscience Lab. And I wanted people on Instagram to get a sense for who you were, because this is it's an epic podcast. And when everyone's all full of fear, you're like, war, war for kindness. Uh, so thanks for coming on Instagram Live with me. Oh, of course. Yeah. So a little bit of background. I mean, I've spent the last 15 years thinking about like a few things, uh, how people connect with each other, how those connections help us, uh, why it can be hard to connect sometimes and how we can get better at it. Um, so I think you're right that moments like this that are so full of fear can tend to draw us inward, can make us focus on whatever we feel like we need and not focus as much on each other. But it turns out that's a huge mistake because when we help other people, we actually benefit ourselves in all sorts of ways. So helping others is a selfish act? <laughs> uh, we talked about this on the episode. I think it depends <laughs> how you define selfishness, right? I mean, if you want to define it narrowly, then helping others, no, is not selfish. But if you think about something that's selfish being anything that's good for you, well, then all sorts of things that we value are selfish. And maybe that's okay. In fact, I think it's really beautiful to think that people have evolved so that helping others feels good to us. I mean, we found in our lab that when you donate money to others, for instance, you activate similar parts of your brain as when you eat chocolate, right? Um, so it's a, it's a broad kind of selfishness that actually is kind of poetic. So if you were to say, buy a cup of coffee for someone and they bought a cup of coffee for you, it actually feels better for both of you. Like the, the net ROI on the coffee was higher. Absolutely. And there are all these experiments that demonstrate that people get this wrong. They don't yeah. realize that spending on others would make them happier. And so they make the mistake of being selfish. And not only do they get a poor ROI on that, they miss out on not just happiness, but on social connections, which also keep us healthy and even improve our immune function, right? Which is something that we could all uh, probably stand to benefit from right now. Now, I, I th I'm thinking about Burning Man. This is one of those things where, where you feel fantastic when you go to Burning Man because everyone just gives you stuff and you just yeah. give everyone stuff. And I, I donate like thousands of cups of coffee. We set up like a free coffee shop. It's the only thing you're allowed to buy at Burning Man is coffee at the Central Camp. But I'm not, no, it's free. Come here, it's free. Like, and it's unbranded. Like there's no bulletproof stuff on there. But it feels really good. And then yeah. you're riding a bike around. People are just giving you a bacon sandwich or whatever. Um, some people have kale sandwiches, but no one eats them. Uh, <laughs> But but the 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 feeling there was really good. I try to explain to people, and I think our podcast episode um, helped me to explain. Like that's one of the reasons that it feels really good to go hang out like that for a week because it's like a, it's kind of like mainlining kind kindness and empathy. Um, talk about neuroscience and neurochemicals that change when you help another person. Yeah. So like I said um, a minute ago, when you help others parts of your brain that are associated with um, sort of reward and motivation tend to be active, but also parts of your brain that are associated with empathy. So you probably have heard of the mirror neuron system. We talked a little bit about this in yeah. too, two, but you know, there are all sorts of brain systems that allow us to basically experience what it's like to be another person in the moment, to sort of dive into their point of view and uh, yeah, walk around in their, it, it, kind of in their experience. And, and those parts of our brain are also active when we decide to engage in kind behaviors. And the better a job that we do taking someone else's perspective, the more fully we understand where they're coming from, the more that we feel like, hey, we're connected to them and we might as well help each other. Okay. And this is all based on your lab, laboratory um, 
you know, laboratory research and like really deep neuroscience, not just sort of the, you know, the, the ancient wisdom that we've all talked about like that. Um, how does this apply to, we didn't talk about this on the show, but how does this apply to, to things like, like warriors? Like, oh, like I'm going to go like, you know, punch this asshole on behalf of my community. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's there's a kind of interesting push and pull between um, aggression and protection, right? So we have two, well, we have many ancient instincts, but two of them are to be connected to the people who we depend on and who depend on us, and okay. also to split the world into us and them, right? And, and, and moments of struggle between groups often mm -hmm. increase kindness within groups. So, for instance, during wartime, after the 9-11 attacks, for instance, there is two things that happen. One, people feel more aggressive towards an outgroup, right? They feel like more warlike in a way. But two, they act more pro-socially, more kindly towards people who are in their own groups. So, like, again, after 9-11, there was this huge um, sort of explosion of charitable giving and volunteering within the U.S. because I think that a lot of us felt like we were under a common threat, and so we had to band together, right? And I think an interesting thing about this moment is that we're all potentially under a common threat, but the enemy is not another group of people. You know, it's a virus. Right. So, right. sort of the the unnamed, the unnamed or, or unseeable, unknowable um, that kind of enemy there, like that, which is what we're facing right now. That can actually drive empathy and kindness, or it can drive fear. If I if I'm paraphrasing I'm going to say how do you make it more empathy and, and more kindness so there's people listening to this right now in the middle of their work day if they're lucky otherwise they're in the middle of their yeah. you know yeah. eating a lot of processed food day because uh, what yeah. else are going to do um how do you like how, how do you flip the switch in your head that's probably the biggest thing that we talked about yeah i think one of the things is to is to acknowledge that fear and pain and suffering are part of this moment and they're not something to avoid or to, or to pretend is not there. Rather, I think it's an important thing is to acknowledge our own pain, our own fear, and then understand that those experiences, in fact, make us similar to each other, that they are shared experiences, right? This is the sort of contemplative practice, for instance, of common humanity, where you don't use your suffering as a wall between you and other people, but rather as a bridge to help you understand that, hey, mm -hmm. my fear is something that, that other people are experiencing too. And one of the best ways that we can both move beyond it is by working together, by understanding that this common experience creates a common purpose as well. All right, that, that makes sense to me. Uh, people are asking in the, the thread here, um, it's, our episode's coming out on Thursday. I thought we might have had it coming out today. So in two days on Bulletproof Radio, so you need to subscribe or at least put it on your calendar to do it. And, and guys, I, I wanted you to just get a taste uh, for who Jamil is, uh, because there's not a lot of people studying this. Uh, and you know, at the highest level, university, neuroscience, things to understand, un untangle what's going on inside. And I feel like right now, uh, so many people are tweaked. Uh, and there's a lot of fear that doesn't have to be there. And then we have this separateness and the idea that you can use intentionally triggered empathy and kindness as a skill, as something you can do, you can do it remotely, you can do it for your neighbor, um, that it's probably the best way that I can think of to, to stay sane and maybe even help your immune system work better. Do you agree with that mindset, like as the best thing you could do? I mean, there are a lot of things that we should be doing, but I think that one of the things about kindness is that it's so, it's, 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 pretty easy to do something kind you don't you don't need to yeah you, you don't need to donate you know all your savings to charity simply yeah. reaching out and connecting with someone who might be struggling asking how they're doing can help them and you at the same time and improve people's mental and physical health yours and the people you connect with i mean social connection is like a human superpower hiding in plain sight and you know we need it all the time but especially in times like this. So I really hope that the episode can encourage people to look inside themselves because kindness and empathy aren't just powerful, they're things that we can practice and get better at. And I think a moment like this is a great opportunity to do that. Right. I believe very strongly in learning from the masters, people who've spent their lives studying things so I can get the Cliff's notes. <laughs> I think you did a good job in the episode delivering it. So uh, people listening uh, to our little Instagram thing here, um, this is one that's worth catching because it doesn't you have to spend any money, you have to do anything, but there are specific tricks you can do to turn on 
things in your brain that are probably turned off by the media right now. And that's what this episode's for. So tune in on Thursday. And Jamil, your, uh, your War for Kindness uh, book is out there. It's worth reading. And just thanks for taking a minute to be on Instagram. Thanks for the long episode. Uh, it, was, it was one of my favorites. So thank oh, you. It's my pleasure, Dave. Um, and thank you for all the work you're doing, too. All right. See you Bye. online, too. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. All right. I'm going to stay on for you guys. Um, if you have any questions for me, I will answer them. I'm supposed to be doing something in another like five minutes, but hey, you got me for five more minutes. Any question you want about whatever. No, uh, no adrenochrome, dude, we get some. Uh, so Wolf, what's up, man? I don't know you guys are following the, the chat thread here. We have um, somewhere around four to 6% of people, according to studies, are either sociopaths or psychopaths. Um, this is actually real. Like these are the people out there. The link, just go to uh, Bulletproof Radio. You can just Google it. It'll come up. It's on iTunes or go to DaveAsprey.com uh, is my page where I put that stuff up. Um, but I, I was going to say that, that there's a very interesting, uh, you like my haircut? Good. Oh, man, I'm, I'm like all ADD because of all these comments. All right, here's the trick on the haircut. It's called a CEO hawk. And what you do is you just get clippers and then you lift up the side and you just like buzz the sides and then it lasts for a very long time. And then when this stuff gets long, he's like clip, clip, clip. It's pretty easy to do. It's one of those things you could do. Um, all right. I was talking, oh, so 4 to 6% of people are, are sociopaths or psychopaths, which is interesting. And some of them do end up being, being trolls. Uh, in fact, a good percentage of them. The other trolls though are usually, for some reason, teenage boys or adults who still believe they're teenage boys. And it's, uh, it, it always makes me laugh, You're like, what's going on there? And so I've been watching the way you guys are handling um, the wolf troll guy who's here. And like the heart, we love you, it's all good. Anyway, I just wanted to thank you for being an awesome audience because it's, it's usually easy for a troll to take things offline. And it's just so not working here. And I'm truly just deriving great pleasure from that. So uh, thank you, Wolf, for being our toy. Uh, you've <laughs> you've done a great job <laughs> and people who follow me <laughs> are awesome <laughs> all right um forza lmt says thanks for bringing me into the world of biohacking oh you started following me in 2011 you're old school og biohacker and uh, people think you're crazy putting butter in your coffee um well thank you for having the courage and willingness just to to, to check it out so all right now, let's see some other things going here. Uh, let's see. Uh, what's it take to get energy uh, from someone uh, who's asking this? Or no, that was from uh, Meta Unique Tequila. Uh, well, in that case, definitely tequila. Now, for energy, my book, um, Headstrong, is probably the one that's most into energy metabolism. It turns out, duh, coffee, right? <laughs> but it's not just that. It's how do you avoid the things that suppress your cells ability to make energy and then how do you get more energy into them energy comes from air and food so the food that has more energy in it energy is calories uh, fat actually works if it's the right kinds of fat and not fat that slows cells down and that's where it gets a little bit weird um, in, in how to do it so i don't want to tell you you have to go buy my book for it but mitochondrial enhancers things like acetyl l carnitine uh, things like pqq those can do they can do wonders and of course brain octane the mct uh, derivative that I make is a big part of my way to get energy and it's worked for at this point millions of people so I'm going to recommend that um, but not because I'm trying to sell it to you it won't change my life if you do or don't buy brain octane I just hope it changes yours all right Mac attack do I think the upgrade labs conference will get postponed or canceled right now we've rescheduled it for uh, July I do not have a crystal ball I believe that our current shutdown is probably causing more harm than good. Uh, and that is a very considered opinion based on data. And we're kind of post for you guys about that. That said, I have no idea how to even in normal times draw a, a linear or rational line to what governments typically do. <laughs> so whether we're going to be allowed to, I can't tell you right now. I'm hopeful we're going to know more probably in another month or two. But when they start lifting restrictions, uh, and seeing uh, what's going on and just doing some of the basic resilience stuff. By the way, as soon as I get time to write this thing, uh, I don't know if you saw me on Instagram, I or saw my post on Instagram um, this weekend, I was planning on doing this big piece for you, but uh, my dog who's 14 or was 14 and a half passed away in the best possible way you could ever have a good death. Uh, so I'm, you know, 
I'm sad, but I'm also, you know, grateful to be perfectly honest. But um, I didn't write the post for you. So uh, once that gets up, you'll see, I believe that if we do those things, um, like coronavirus has been with us for millions of years, they're not going away, neither is this one. It's part of the, part of the ecosystem we live in now. So we're gonna have to deal with that. And I think that we know how to do it now, so. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, Carolyn, I love your question. If someone can live to 100 above, how do you propose they finance their lives? The power of compound interest gets really interesting. <laughs> that's, that's part of it. The other thing is, you're not gonna have one career, you're gonna have many careers. And now you can say, Dave, what's going on? Did you guys know I used to weld Toyota truck frames and I put auto parts in boxes for five years? Uh, I actually did. Uh, apologies if you're driving one of the trucks I welded because I kind of suck at welding. But what you will find is that as you evolve over time, I was, uh, when I started Bulletproof, I was one of the hundred most influential bloggers on cloud computing, believe it or not. And I'm a coffee entrepreneur and an expert in human performance because I followed what was most interesting. I turns out I'd become an expert because that was my passion on the side. And will I be doing this or will I be you know, teaching college classes 10 years from now or uh, my neuroscience interests with 40 years in our big thing? I don't know, but I have certainly had more than one career and I think you will too. So it, when you're a hundred, if you felt like you do right now or better, would you want to not be working or would you want to be giving back? Like the whole point of this, this conversation with Jamil, it's like helping others. I start companies to help others. All of my companies have a mission that's much bigger than me. I don't start companies to make money. And, and there's entrepreneurs who are, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to take some idea out there and I'm going to do it shittier and I'm going to make enough money. Okay. You can do that. You probably don't like your life. Um, and you're actually taking away from society or you're saying, I'm going to make something that hasn't been done before. And I'm going to do that. So I, I, I can finance it. You're going to keep doing stuff that matters. Anthony, there you go. You might not make it to 180, but you're going to try. Here's the deal. If I die on my way to 180, I still win. Uh, that, that's, that's okay. Spinnaker method. Does type of butter matter? It has to be grass fed or it doesn't work. I would love to just say eat industrial butter, except industrially raised animals are just treated in a way that's horrifying. I don't recommend that you ever eat industrial meat. And don't use industrial dairy either. It's got the wrong fats. It's got bad proteins. It's just a bad deal. So uh, do not go vegan. That is not good for you. I was a raw vegan, a devout one for a while. It took me a long time to recover from that, as it does for many others. Uh, but eating industrial animals is evil, and don't do that either. So there you go. All right. Uh, through Jim's eyes, how is what Jamil is studying similar or different from NLP mirroring and matching? Very different from that. Uh, let's see, Liv Ritually says, you've read Spirit Hacking in my book and uh, you went to my morning routine. Lately, I've been waking up uh, doing a little bit of uh, Tai Chi uh, from Dr. Barry Morgulon, um, who uh, has been on the show a couple times back, the most popular episode of 2018, uh, which is pretty cool. And he, uh, so I've been doing some of, of his teaching there and then I'm um, sitting in my infrared sauna and then various other biohacks. And I uh, finally convinced my 10 year old son, Alan, uh, to come and hang with me. Uh, so he actually wakes up and then uh, comes into the sauna. So we sit there and sweat and uh, we've been reading from Ryan Holiday's Daily Stoic, uh, which is pretty cool. So introducing my 10 year old to not whining. <laughs> All right. Oh, Mariella just converted her boyfriend to drinking Bulletproof coffee. Rock on. Um, let's see. Oh, Ben Doke. Ben Doke. I just moved to a new house, totally clear of mold. Congratulations. Mold does so much. In fact, I am more worried now about mold than I ever have been in probably the history of my awareness of toxic mold because so many people are now indoors all the time. You know what we do when we're indoors? We breathe <laughs> and we put moisture out. And then that moisture sticks inside our walls, it sticks to our windows. And if you're in a place where you can't even open your windows, and a lot of people are, uh, we are having a humidity problem. Um, also, you're cooking more. So that pot of boiling water is adding humidity. You have an air conditioner on, warm air condenses and you get toxic mold that grows. So what I recommend for toxic mold, and guys, I do, see, so do I have a bottle of it around here? Um, I do, uh, I start companies that do stuff that matters. This is a company I started. 
Um, it's called Homebiotic. I'm not trying to sell you guys on it, but um, Homebiotic, it's backwards on here because, well, that's Instagram. Thank you very much. Homebiotic. This is a spray. It costs 29 bucks, as cheap as I could possibly make it. And it eats toxic mold as a fuel source. If you spray it around before there's moisture, anywhere you get moisture in the house, mold won't grow. Third party test results, um, incredible levels of protection, even when it's really warm and really wet. So that's homebiotic.com. Um, I would spray that around uh, in a new house. The first thing, when I built the place I'm in right now, we did it. I just did a video, the door behind me there, um, around the bottom of it, I'm in a wet environment. So I spray that door jam every month. You don't have to spray it very often, you're inoculating. That's a really good thing to do. Best cardio for a confined space without a gym, AKA a boat, swimming. <laughs> um, let's see, what would you do for cardio? I'm, I'm actually a fan of electrical stimulation modalities. If that's within reach for you, you can actually raise your heart rate with electricity, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, Michael, Viome tells you to avoid MCT. Any thoughts? I'm gonna have to talk to them about that. You know, I, I'm an early advisor and investor in Viome. If you guys haven't got your Viome test results, I highly recommend that if it's within reach for you. Um, it's dropped in price precipitously since they started doing it. I, I'm dear friends with Naveen, the founder, and every time he can get his testing for cheaper, he drops the price because he wants to make zero dollars from it. And just to get the data, they found 10,000 new species of bacteria in the human gut so far. And then they, they triangulate that to try and tell you, hey, this is what you should do or not do uh, with food. I don't know why you would tell someone to avoid MCT. Um, actually, it doesn't make any sense. Even if you're looking at LPS issues, MCT helps you, uh, helps your liver uh, process uh, and handle MCTs. So I, that's, a, that's a tough one for me. So I will ask them what's going on there. All right. Hey, from Serbia. Hey, Rebel, that's awesome. Uh, top foods that cause skin conditions from Jamil Cassis. Um, it turns out wheat, dairy protein, but not dairy fat, um, eggs, soy are very, are very common ones. Uh, but a lot of skin problems actually are caused by toxic mold, surprisingly. BR Squires, Higi ozone for mold. Yep, oh, my, I just moved my ozone setup, um, but ozone is something that I've done uh, for a very long time, it fixed my brain from toxic mold to chronic fatigue syndrome, which is a toxic mold uh, symptom and all. It's really a big deal. Um, what interesting recipes have I cooked recently? What did I do? I had something that was really good. Well, just uh, if you look at the Bulletproof cookbook, and a lot of you guys might not even know, it's, it's on Amazon, published by a big uh, publishing house, 100 recipes. Um, one of the things that, that's really amazing, you get bored because you got to eat your veggies. Steam or lightly cook your veggies however you like to cook them. Uh, don't fry them because that's dumb. And then uh, throw a third of your veggies in the blender. Add some apple cider vinegar. Add some brain octane. Add maybe some olive oil. Add some butter. A pinch of salt. Smoked salt is really nice. Whatever herbs are available to you. And blend the crap out of it. And it should be like a thick, goopy, like a guacamole kind of consistency when you're done. Take that and pour it back on top of your other veggies uh, that you haven't blended. And then it's like the old you know, uh, creamed green beans or creamed spinach or something like that. It's so good. And when you get the tartness and the saltiness and the herbs just right, it's like kind of like a cheesy sauce, but it's just Brussels sprouts or it's just asparagus or just green beans with butter and all that stuff. But man, when you eat it, it's great. And if you wanna really up level it, what I've been doing lately is I add two or three scoops of inner fuel. This is the prebiotic that has almost no flavor. I mean, it's very, very neutral. These are gums from trees that feed healthy gut bacteria. I quadrupled my number of species doing that. And uh, I add, of course, the brain octane. Uh, so, oh, and collagen protein. So if I don't have time to cook meat for a meal, I'll put in a few scoops of uh, bulletproof collagen protein. So then what you've done, you've gotten amazing protein that you can't taste. Uh, you've got an amazing creamy fats and this fragrant dish that you actually want to eat. And you can make it in one container um, plus your blender. Unless you have a hand blender, then you could even do it in the same thing. So less dishes. That's so good. Um, who's not, no, I'm can mean, whatever. I'm not going to read your comment. I did read it. See? All right. I'm going to scroll down some more. Um, thoughts on niacin when sick? Man, niacin, it gives you such a major flush. It could help if you're sick. Um, for COVID specifically, I think niacin might be a really good idea because we're having problems with microcirculation. 
um, in addition to hemoglobin damage. So I like the idea of niacin, um, but uh, for detoxing, it can work, but it's pretty uncomfortable to get a niacin flush. Um, Sid in Seattle, most effective way to eat for the way we're currently confined to live right now, uh, maximize veggies, get good quality fats and avoid inflammatory fats and inflammatory foods right now. So this whole, oh, I'm going to go bake bread again. No, like don't, don't do it. Uh, don't get addicted to junk foods. All the packaged food industrial companies are like, this is great. It turns out people are going back to their packaged food and they're amazed at the good quality. And you're like, oh man, it's, if you can avoid it, packaged food is not a good move. All right, I'm going to answer a couple more questions and then I'm 10 minutes late for my next meeting, but I was like helping you guys. So let's see. Um, Andre says, thanks for all the content. It was a game changer. Thank you for letting me know. That's, that's why I do what I do. L-carnosine from Gary D. Small. I mentioned L-carnosine in Superhuman, my anti-aging book that just came out. L-carnosine, if you're going to have carbs, is a really good idea because it blocks the damage that carbs do specifically to the lining of your arteries, which is a good thing. Oh, and the last question I'm going to answer here. Um, Dow Random. What's the biggest secret to being able to do fasting? It is start with at least black coffee, which doubles your ketone levels. And if you take even just like a teaspoon of brain octane and blend it in there, you don't have to do butter, but we're talking a very small amount. You will just have no hunger and you're getting all the benefits of fasting that way. And I've asked several different experts about that on the show. So if you want to just like pad the first two days, so you just don't feel any pain from fasting. <laughs> that's what I do. And after that, it's a smooth sailing because that kicks you into ketosis, which is what suppresses your hunger. Normally it takes you like two to four days to go into ketosis. And this is a, a much easier way to do it. All right, guys, if uh, you're enjoying this, thank you. And if you haven't already signed up to subscribe to the Bulletproof Radio podcast, there's links and all on daveasprey.com. Just search Bulletproof Radio, go to iTunes or however you like to listen. The episode on kindness, on the war for kindness with Jamil, who was on earlier, that comes out this Thursday. And you're going to want to catch that one. There's really good stuff that you need to know on how to manage your mindset there from a professor at Stanford who studies this stuff for a living. All right, my friends, have a wonderful day. Catch you later.